Let's look at Virginia Woolf herself. Virginia Woolf, she was born Adeline Virginia Stephen. Stephen, her uh, father's name. Uh, she has um, she had multiple roles and um, facets: novelist, essayist, a biographer, and feminist. So let's look at family members first. Leslie Stephen. Leslie Stephen. Why Leslie Stephen? I don't uh, forget because when I wrote. The set exam, uh, Tamil Nadu set exam for the first time. This was the question asked, who was Leslie Stephen uh, to Virginia Woolf, father? <laughs> that was the question, uh, you know, in those days people asked. Why Leslie Stephen? Because Leslie Stephen was the first editor of the Dictionary of National Biography. They had a project called uh, the Dictionary of National Biography, which included short biographies of uh, almost all the famous men and women of Britain. So that's why this dictionary is so famous, the Dictionary of National Biography. And Leslie Stephen was the first editor. And this fact is also important to understand Virginia Woolf because Virginia Woolf was also a biographer. She wrote a lot of biographies. And mother, Julia Jackson and with Julia Jackson, Leslie Stephen had four children because uh, both of them were married before. So Leslie Stephen's and Julia Jackson's children, four. You have Vanessa, then Toby, Virginia, then Adrian. Okay. Then this is Leonard Woolf, a husband of uh, Virginia Woolf. Leonard Woolf was a philosopher, was also a writer. Uh, this is one of his fair works, novel, The Village in the Jungle. And he was a member of a society called Fabian Society, F-A-B-I-A-N. Anyone? There was also a famous writer who was also a member of Fabian Society, um, Irish, was also a Nobel laureate. Uh, you can tell me the name. Fabian Society. Fabian Society. What is Fabian Society? It is a society... Uh, which says there should be a change in, uh, in the society, uh, not through revolution, not based on Marxism. You know, according to Marx, if there should be a change in society, there should be a revolution. But these people want a change in society, but without revolution. So that is Fabian society's philosophy. And we have a famous member. So this was also asked, uh, was also a question. So we have an Irish playwright, a Nobel laureate, who was also a member of this Fabian Society. And sometimes people consider Virginia Woolf uh, as a member of this society. Okay. So Bernard Shaw was, was also a member of Fabian Society. And both Leonard Woolf and Virginia Woolf, they started a press called Hogarth Press in 1719. H-O-G-A-R-T-H, Hogarth Press. Still available, I mean, still running. Now they have a special series called Hogarth Shakespeare. Uh, I mean, it's a branch of or a part of this press. Uh, their assignment, they are going to retell almost all the plays of William Shakespeare. It's a retelling. Retelling in the sense, they tell the same story in the contemporary context written by a contemporary novelist in a different context. For instance, you have Janet Winterson. This is the novel, The Gap of Time. It is a retelling of the winter's tale. Sometimes you should have a mnemonic. How do you remember? Because the author name itself is Winter, right? Winterson, Janet Winterson. So The Gap of Time uh, is the retelling of the winter's tale. This you can easily tell. Howard Jacobson's novel, Shylock is my name. It's a retelling of The Merchant of Venice, but his most famous book, The Finkler Question, the F-I-N-K-L-E-R, The Finkler Question, which won the Booker Prize. Then you have Tracy Chevalier, T-R-A-C-Y, Tracy Chevalier, C-H-E-V-A-L-I-E-R, Tracy Chevalier's New Boy. So new boy, you can look at the picture. So it's a black, it's about a black person. And then immediately you can think of Othello. 
it is a retelling of othello sometimes you can get a question on this and if you are doing your ma mphil or phd this series will be help helpful for you to pick up a topic and work on the retelling what is interesting the form play is you know converted into a novel so how a genre you know the play or drama is converted into a novel that is one and the story shakespeare story it is not the exact story here the characters are different the context is different but in the form of a novel and i ask you to i request you to check out the other novels under hogarth shakespeare because we have margaret atwood canadian writer margaret atwood also retold a story famous story please check out the name of the retelling uh, by margaret atwood next this is the group we often come across right the bloomsbury group one of the literary groups so we have members clive bell clive bell is an art critic his wife vanessa bell sister of virginia woolf so vanessa married clive so she became vanessa bell vanessa bell was actually a painter then we have duncan grant another painter then em foster uh, a passage to india you know the name of the novel uh, em foster a novelist then john maynard keynes k e y n e s an economist this was once asked a question generally when they think of bloomsbury group we only think of the members in one of the net exams they asked which member of the bloomsbury group was an economist so this was a question asked once then we have roger fry an art critic we will look at roger fry because roger fry without understanding roger fry we can't go to this essay okay then we have the biographer yes uh, we have an answer here hack seed as yes, a hack seed by margaret atwood is the retelling of shakespeare's the tempest and you can understand the word hag hag means old woman all right hag seed seed symbolically refers to child so hag seed refers to caliban in in the tempest so hag uh, who anyone uh, who is the mother of caliban in the tempest because uh, mother of caliban was a witch and um, she was defeated by prospero so hag refers to caliban's mother and seed is caliban himself so that's the title hag seed maybe you can also check out the story of this novel so psychorox psychorox is the name of uh, tempest i mean caliban's mother then let's come here this biographer litton strachey changed the way biographies are written earlier when they wrote biographies they don't interfere into their personal life if they write biography if they wrote biographies they wrote about their person you know public life in the public image for the first time litton strachey a member of the bloomsbury group wrote this book eminent victorians and he just probed into their personal life and gossip and he included a lot of other things his personal opinions he changed the way biographies are written for the first time and generally we get a question who are those eminent victorians there are four uh, can you help me uh, the four name the four one anyone can remember uh, matthew arnold's father thomas arnold because he was a famous uh, victorian uh, matthew arnold his father thomas arnold one of the eminent victorians then we have um, cardinal manning m a n n i n g then florence nightingale and general gordon charles gordon so you can also check out the name of the names of four eminent victorians okay then vanessa bell i told you before she was a painter and there was on there was also another club called the memoir club m e m o i r what is memoir something to do with the memory uh, it's like uh, it's a form itself it's a literary form where you talk about your own personal life or someone's personal life in you know in snippets here and there not it's not like a biography the the members of this bloomsbury group they also participated in this club the memoir club they meet and they talk about biographies mostly biographies their own life or someone's life 
So we have one of the famous guy, Roger Fry, a biography, I mean here a book written by Virginia Woolf. I told you before, Virginia Woolf was also a biographer and Virginia Woolf wrote the biography of Roger Fry, one of the members of Bloomsbury Group. What he did, this year is very important to understand this essay. 1910, 1910, uh, he organized an exhibition in London. That exhibition and a painting exhibition, this is the name of that exhibition, Manny and the Post-Impressionist, painter, Manny was a painter. So Manny and the Post-Impressionist. So he introduced the European art, avant-garde, in a front, uh, famous leading one. Paul Cezanne and Pablo Picasso. I hope many of you, many of you should have uh, heard of Pablo Picasso. So Paul Cezanne, C-E-Z-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, then Pablo Picasso. So he was the one who introduced the paintings of Paul Cezanne and Pablo Picasso and other impressionist painting to the London public. And this painting, uh, this exhibition was visit visited by Virginia Woolf and her sister. Um, and both of them were impressed by that and Virginia Woolf got an idea because earlier she thought how to change you know, the way novels are written. Now she got an idea. What is that idea? You need not represent something you know, just physically, outward appearance. You can talk about the inner reality of characters, what the characters think. That should be uh, represented in novel. Why this idea? Because the painting, impressionism. What is impression? Just imagine the word impression. If you take a coin and you know you might have done this in your childhood. What do you do? Uh, maybe you, uh, you place a piece of paper on the coin and you take a pencil and you sketch it and you have the impression of the coin on the paper but it's not the exact one, right? It's just an impression. Similar way, when you think of our childhood, maybe when you are four years old, five years old, or when you are eight years old, we vaguely remember certain things. Maybe one incident or two incident. It's not picture perfect, but a kind of impression. It's not uh, so clear, it's kind of a vague. Imagine if you paint that picture, that is impressionistic painting, okay? And Virginia Woolf thought, that's how we also remember a lot of things. What about, bringing that into novel, that becomes a stream of consciousness. Whatever idea you have about your past and the thoughts come to your mind at a given point of time. So that gave the idea to Virginia Woolf to come up with stream of consciousness novels. And these are some of the other biographies written by Virginia Woolf. So we have Orlando, O-R-L-A-N-D-O, Orlando, very important novel because it is based on her lover, Vita Sackville Best. Virginia Woolf, uh, before her marriage, even uh, she had a relationship with her friend, Vita Sackville Best. Vita Sackville Best, she was also a famous uh, artist. So both Virginia Woolf and Vita Sackville Best, they had a relationship, kind of a lesbian relationship. Then Virginia Woolf married Leonard Woolf, right? And in this work, Virginia Woolf pays, uh, Virginia Woolf records her relationship and kind of a uh, veiled portrayal of Vita Sackville West, Orlando. The character in Orlando in this story is a man, then turns into a woman, kind of both, Arthanadi Sura, both, I mean, both male and female. And last net exam, I mean, not, not last, before one, 2021, there was a question in net exam. The character Orlando, towards the end of the story, Orlando has been uh, trying to write a poem. What is the name of the poem? Or the poem is about a tree. What is the name of the tree? That was the question asked in a net exam. So whenever you read a work, at least read the summary, outline of that work, so that you at least you can eliminate the option and find out the answer. The answer was oak tree, right? You can also check out the answer, oak tree, right? Then this is another interesting biography uh, by Virginia Woolf, Flush, F-L-U-S-H. It's about a dog. It's about a, a cocker spaniel, a dog. And the dog belongs to, I mean, historically belongs to 
the Victorian writer Elizabeth Barrett Browning. This biography is from the point of view of the dog uh, itself. The dog is in love with uh, uh, this writer, Elizabeth Barrett Browning. And suddenly a guy enters named Browning, Robert Browning, the poet. And this girl, Elizabeth, she has been in love with Flush. Suddenly, she falls in love with the stranger called Robert Browning. And this story is told from this dog's point of view. Initially, the dog hates this fellow, Robert Browning. Then it understands. Then someone kidnaps this dog and it is rescued by Robert Browning. Then a kind of a triangle relationship. Uh, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, Robert Browning, and Flush. So nice love story, but it's a biography. A uh, fictional biography, imaginative. Okay, this is by Virginia Woolf. Very interesting work. And I hope you know this uh, uh, sonnets written by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Uh, she wrote a sonnet collection, uh, love poems for Robert Browning. Sonnets from, can anyone fill it up? Sonnets from the, I'm just leaving it out. Sonnets from, now she wrote, she gave this title, uh, naming after a country. We imagine that it, it's a translation. When we say translated from the Tamil, it means translated from the Tamil original text, right? So similar way she said Potikis, is sonnets from the Potikis. So that was the title she gave to her sonnet collection, sonnets from the Potikis. We imagine these sonnets are translated from the Portuguese original, but that is not the true meaning. The Portuguese actually refers to Elizabeth because the Portuguese is the nickname or um, given by Robert Browning to Elizabeth Barrett Browning. So this is a secret message to Robert Browning. Hey, I'm writing this for you. Sonnets from your lover. Sonnets from the Portuguese. The Portuguese here refers to Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Next, uh, her first novel, The Voyage Out, but initially titled Mel Ambrosia, M-E-L-Y-M-B-R-O-S-I-A, 1915. So this could be a question. What was the original title of Virgin Woolf's first novel, The Voyage Out, Mel Ambrosia? And you know the word Ambrosia. A M B R O S A A Ambrosia. So Ambrosia means uh, what do you say? A kind of a nectar the, that gives you immortality. Uh, in Tamil we say Amurdam. So Amurdam means Ambrosia in English. A M B R O S A A Ambrosia, food of the gods. So here Melambrosia. Melambrosia means something good, uh, uh, flavorsome. It's a pleasant kind of a food. Okay. Then her most famous work, uh, Mrs. Dalloway, written in 1925. The original title of Mrs. Dalloway was The Hovers. Then she changed it to Mrs. Dalloway. And most of her works are, you know, a stream of consciousness. And 1922, I told you before, when, when you think of 1922, I hope a lot of work should come to your mind and include this work to that list. So anyone, 1922, what are the comes that comes to your mind? When you say modernism in Britain, 1922 is associated with the T.S. Eliot, James Joyce, Virginia Woolf, uh, D.H. Lawrence. So when you say 1922, yes, immediately you say The Wasteman by T.S. Eliot. You can also say Ulysses by James Joyce. You should also say hereafter, Virginia Woolf's Jacob's Room. So Jacob's Room was also published in 1922. So we have uh, T. Eliot, James Joyce, now Virginia Woolf. So the Wasteland, Ulysses and Jacob's Room. Generally, it is accepted the term was coined by William James in, uh, in his book, The Principles of Psychology, right? William James was a brother of Henry James, uh, American author, Henry James. Anyone, when you think of Henry James, the American author, because he was also known for his stream of consciousness novels. And there are a lot of novels. Uh, can you name one by Henry James? So when I think of uh, Henry James, uh, I think of this novel, The Turn of the Screw. The Turn, T-U-R-N, The Turn of the Screw, S-C-R-E-W, Turn of the Screw, yes, Portrait of a Lady. 
and Daisy Miller. Um, there are a lot of other novels. Please check out Henry James as the ambassador. So these are the novels by Henry James. So now you can make the connection. So uh, this is how you prepare for it. Okay, you think of stream of consciousness. You can immediately think of Virginia Woolf, 1922, uh, Jacob's Rome. You can also think of T.S. Eliot, uh, James Joyce. You can also think of the one who coined the term stream of consciousness, William James, Principles of Psychology. Then Henry James, uh, you can think of the other works, The Turn of the Screw, The Ambassador, Portrait of Lady, Daisy Miller. At least read one of the summaries of uh, Henry James. Okay, Then I would say, um, uh, because there are certain problems, uh, I want you to check out stream of consciousness in Google because it's the golden bowl. That's also a novel by Henry James. Because uh, stream of consciousness generally is attributed, uh, accepted that James, William James was the first one to coin it. And we have books like J.A. Cudden uh, Dictionary where this is uh, there, but uh, people say it was coined before by some other people right please check out their names simple wikipedia will do okay we'll go next then 1927 a turning point virginia old famous novel to the lighthouse and i also want to check out the three divisions what are the three divisions in the novel to the lighthouse i mean three divisions three parts it is made of three parts part one part two part three three parts uh, i want you to check out the name of the three parts in this novel Virginia Woolf to the lighthouse. And let me tell you, towards the end of the third part, so this is the ending, we have a famous character called Lily Briscoe, B-R-I-S-C-O-E. So Lily Briscoe uh, was a budding painter. She wants to paint a picture of uh, Mrs. Ramsay and her youngest child, James. So she has been trying to paint that, but she couldn't do that. Towards the end of the novel, she sees a pattern uh, on the tablecloth, a kind of a vague impression of that uh, thing. And that inspires her, a kind of an epiphanic moment, a moment of realization that she could be an artist. Right? Then she starts the paint, you know, the painting, and she finishes it off. Similar, you know, at the, in the meantime, you have uh, Mr. Ramsey and her children visiting the lighthouse. So it's a kind of a two endings to this novel. And it's a completion she gives to her painting. And why this is important, Lily Bresco, her painting of uh, Mrs. Ramsey and her youngest child, James, is actually an impressionist painting. It's not an ordinary painting, you know, realistic painting. It's not a realistic portrayal, but an impressionistic portrayal. Impression, this is kind of an impressionistic painting. What you see on the cover, it's not, a realistic portal, but we get the impression. This is Lily Brasco. This is the uh, painting she's drawing and behind which you have a boat going to the lighthouse. And this is impression, right? Yes, we are getting answers. Uh, yes, uh, these are the three <coughs> sections, the window, time passes, and the lighthouse. Good. So with a sudden intensity, as if she saw it clear for a second, she drew a line there in the center, it was done, it was finished. So she becomes an artist. So now you can connect this with a James Joyce novel, a portrait of the artist as a young man. Anyone who is the protagonist of James Joyce novel, a portrait of the artist as a young man, uh, named after a famous Greek character, father of uh, uh, Icarus, right? So that character, you can compare Lily Bresco and the protagonist of James Joyce novel, a portrait of the artist as a young man, because both want to be artists, but they hesitate. And finally, they have a moment of realization called epiphany, E-P-I-P-H-A-N-Y. We will discuss epiphany. And uh, epiphany is Stephen Dettelus. So it's Stephen Dettelus is the protagonist of the, uh, that novel. So you can compare and contrast Lily Bresco's moment of realization with Stephen Dettelus' moment of realization, epiphanic moment. And generally, the word epiphany is associated with James Joyce for turning into a literary term. Please check it out. Next, these are some of the other novels by Virginia Woolf. Night and Day, The Years Between the Acts. 
and virginia olf uh, in her diary uh, she talked about her uh, way of representing the inner reality of characters so because this is how uh, modern writers differ from the earlier victorian writers earlier victorian writers they focused on outward reality not inward reality outward reality in the sense they talk about how you dress what you eat what you speak this is outward reality inward reality or inner reality you know what you think what is going on in your mind at now no now what is going on maybe you are listening to me now there is also a thought that says okay after 7 o'clock i have to do this today i have to do this i have to go to college or i have something to do so a lot of thoughts are going in your mind like a stream you know a train of thoughts that flow uh, you know that flows like a river in your mind and imagine capturing that in your in a novel so that is stream of consciousness and virginia all says when i write a novel when i write uh, when i explore the mind of a character uh, i go for this technique called tunneling process she says the human mind is like a cave and what i do i have to uh, dig and dig and dig every point of time and finally i make a tunnel into the mind of that character right i penetrate into the mind of the character and i give that to you so she defined her way of writing tunneling process okay and her only novel fresh water a comedy then these are some of her famous short stories the mark on the wall you, uh, you should read this short story the mark on the wall maybe a question uh, what is that mark on the wall i mean what is that mark here is a character uh, who is psychologically disturbed female and uh, she is asked to take a rest there is something called a rest cure so people thought if you are psychologically disturbed if you uh, take a rest you will get cured so that was the assumption so even why this is important a uh, kind of a bit autobiographical because virginia wolf was uh, psychologically disturbed she was asked to take rest but that actually um, uh, you know aggravated that feeling so the mark on the wall uh, find out what is that mark anyone what was actually on the wall because this character imagines that mark to be something else a lot of other things in reality the mark is uh, turns out to be uh, a kind of um, i can't say <laughs> find out the mark on the wall what is that mark then keep gardens monday or tuesday these are some of the other short stories the new dress the duchess and the jeweler yes snail it turns out to be a snail s n a i l uh, the duchess and the jeweler and this is another short story collection a haunted house and other short stories you can also draw parallels between this short story virginia woolf's the mark on the wall and uh, american writer charlotte perkins p e r k i n s charlotte perkins the yellow wallpaper the yellow wallpaper so compare and contrast virginia woolf's mark on the wall and charlotte perkins the yellow wallpaper both talk about rest cure r e s t rest cure because both women say this is a flop this method doesn't work then comes or uh, before that we have Uh, when we say modernism not only virginia woolf james joyce or t s eliot we have sigmund freud sigmund freud 1900 we have his contribution his understanding of the unconscious mind he said not rest cure talking cure see if you are if you are not happy please speak your mind to your best friend or best friends right talking cure so you have to talk with other people you have to share things with other people so instead of isolating yourself in a place and taking the rest so that's how you know psychology changed next this is one of her concepts virginia wolf androgyny a n d r o g y n y androgyny andro means male gyny here female like gynecology you know you have this base gynecology right so androgyny androgyny a character 
with both the features or both the qualities male and female so if a character can have the male part as as a female part in terms of thinking that is androgyny now you can say which novel you know can be called androgenic or androgyny virginia woolf's which novel of virginia woolf has this feature androgyny where a character is both male and female uh, writing a poem called uh, oak tree right so you can connect this one with that one is yes, orlando orlando a biography so come you know compare this concept with orlando next so when you say virginia woolf as a feminist this is her pioneering work uh, a room of one's own and beauty about virginia woolf's writing whenever she writes something she writes it like a story so in this work she says i am going to introduce a character and she says that character could be called mary betton b e t o n or mary setton s c t o n or mary carmichael it's up to you so this is the character through which we uh, you know we understand room of one's own so whenever she writes an essay the essay is written like a story so there are characters she creates imaginative characters so this could be a question mary betton mary setton mary carmichael okay so she offers a lot of names to us you pick readers you can pick one of the names as the narrator then this is the most famous or often quoted line from this work a woman must have money and a room of her own if she is to write fiction if a woman should become a writer she should have money she should earn money she should stand on her own legs in tamil we say then a room of her own so that she has a, a personal space to write if you do not have money and if you do not have a room of your own then you can't be a writer or to write fiction right so economically independent and uh, you know a self sufficient girl next uh, this is often asked a question she creates an imaginative uh, character called judith shakespeare judith shakespeare um, an imaginative sister of william shakespeare she says just imagine william shakespeare had a gifted sister called judith shakespeare so we know judith uh, shakespeare right william shakespeare who ran away to london because we know <laughs> we had a story that um, he stole a deer so to escape punishment he went to london right in london he became an uh, became an artist a full fledged artist anyone remembers the year uh, the last years of william shakespeare uh, if you know just let me know or check back okay the last years of william shakespeare we don't know what happened during those years right but anyway we have a story that shakespeare ran away from stratford to london to become a playwright just imagine judith shakespeare a talented artist and a talented actress she wanted to be an actress okay 1585 and 1592 so 1585 the birth of uh, his uh, twins then 1592 we have uh, green greens the pamphlet so that shakespeare was in london okay good so now judith shakespeare just imagine judith shakespeare wanted to be an actress in london so she also runs away uh, from avon to london but unlike shakespeare she couldn't find a place to stay in london and she couldn't find food uh, to survive so what happens she approached people and she was exploited by you know people associated with the theater promising her okay we would employ you or we would give you a chance but in those days women could not um, act on the stage most of the women characters were done by uh, young 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 male or young young boys teenage boys so she couldn't find a chance and she was impregnated by one of the rogues there and finally she didn't have anything her career was spoiled and she had nothing before her she committed suicide so virginia woolf says 
in those days it was a tough to imagine a talented woman becoming famous or achieving fame and uh, becoming an artist like shakespeare so this could be the fate of judith shakespeare next one professions for women which i would say is if you want to be an artist killing the angel in the house was the part of the occupation of a women writer i told you yesterday in yesterday's class john ruskin's sesame and lilies uh, in the second part the queen's gardens um, john ruskin quoted this poet coventry patmore no the angel in the house that's the name of the poem by coventry patmore had made brutes men and men divine it was women who turned uh, animals into men and men into gods according to coventry patmore and virginal says no i don't like the angel in the house the mother the daughter a wife anyone else so please kill the angel in the house so if you want to portray women don't portray simply them as you know uh, wife or something else who as if they do not have any more identity any other identity so kill that representation the conventional representation of women kill that representation so that you could be a better writer so that is the advice given by a piece of advice given by virginia wolf to young writers professions for women this is one of her famous essay collections the death of the moth and other essays and as an essayist she has written a lot of essays the russian point of view russian novels inspired virginia wolf to come up with a stream of consciousness uh, whether it is tostrovsky or leo tolstoy or gokul right so this when you get time just read the russian point of view then this is interesting on being ill for the first time uh, women talking about illness mental and physical so on being ill then um, this time i thought of including this essay in stories behind the stories in that lecture but i couldn't do that uh, want of time i am christina rossetti is actually an essay by virginia wool it is about an incident that happened in christina rossetti's life uh, sister of uh, dg rossetti um, dg rossetti anyone associated with which literary group dg rossetti and i hope a pre raphaelite yes pre raphaelite brotherhood christina rossetti i am christina rossetti she was very silent she went to a house people were talking then she suddenly uh, stood and said i am christina rossetti you know she asserted her identity and virginia wolf registers that incident in this essay i am christina rossetti okay then three guineas we will dis discuss uh, this one when we discuss feminism so the i'm going to start a series uh, after a few um, weeks or after a month we will be going into literary theory so so far we have been discussing lectures literary discussion and literary criticism there will be a series called literary theory under which we will be discussing structuralism post structuralism and all the schools of criticism when we discuss feminism in detail we will also talk about virginia wolf and her other other famous work and we will also talk about three guineas then this is another essay collection the captain's deathbed and other essays okay and pay attention now modern fiction modern fiction was published originally written in 1919 then published in 1927 this is connected to today's essay and later i mean in 1925 it was published in her uh, most famous essay collection the common reader it came out in two volumes the common reader just remember the common reader was an essay collection by virginia wolf so in modern fiction you know she divides writers into two materialist and spiritualist materialist she says h g wells arnold bennett arnold bennett and john galsworthy they were materialists what do you mean by material people who focus on outward reality material things whereas people like uh, james joyce they focus on the spirituality i mean the inner reality of characters so james joyce is called spiritualist and h g wells arnold bennett and john galsworthy are called materialist because we are going to look at h g wells arnold bennett and john galsworthy in in the essay we are going to discuss and this is one of our often quoted line from this essay modern fiction 
what is modern fiction modern fiction captures how a character thinks what is going on in the character's mind in the inner reality and capturing that is like an incessant shower of innumerable atoms i'm just giving the line please check out the full line so incessant unstoppable i mean not stopping endless an endless rain shower of innumerable atoms you know countless atoms or ideas or memories you now just imagine a lot of ideas are flooding your mind at a given point of time and imagine you are going to write that in the form of a novel so that is stream of consciousness okay and this is how she died virginia woolf committed suicide by uh, filling her uh, you know packets with the stones and she walked into the river called the ouse behind her uh, house this is aus o u s e and she drowned herself to death so in 1941 okay and uh, i told you before the hovers right this is the original title uh, and the hovers was also made into a novel by michael cunningham m i c h a l michael cunningham american novelist this is not exactly a retelling of mrs dalloway but it's an interesting novel with three layers of stories one story is about virginia woolf herself because this is a opening scene of this uh, a movie adaptation of the same novel the hovers the novel adapted into a movie in the movie this is the opening scene where virginia woolf commits suicide so in this novel the hovers by michael cunningham there are three stories three women about three women one virginia woolf herself uh, uh, her personal life and how she wants to be a writer and her mental problem there is a reader reader who is actually reading mrs dalloway okay i mean the novel written by virginia woolf a reader a housewife who wants to read this novel but she couldn't read so she books a room and she tries to read that novel and another story it's about mrs dalloway herself right she you know kind of a retelling of mrs dalloway so we have lot of stories three layers of stories in the work hovers it won the pulitzer prize check out this novel or at least watch the movie